Oklahoma Gardening is a production of the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service as part of the land-grant mission of the Division of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources at Oklahoma State University, dedicated to improving the quality of life of the citizens of Oklahoma through research-based information. Underwriting assistance for our program is provided by the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping to keep Oklahoma green and growing. Today on the Best of Oklahoma Gardening, we revisit some of our favorite garden storage structures from last year's Garden Shed Contest. There is a Cape Cod Cottage in Enid, a tidy, tiny cottage in Moore, and an inside-out potting shed in Muskogee. And along with every shed, host Casey Hinches finds a beautiful and inspiring garden to stroll through. Gail and John Wynn outside of Enid, Oklahoma, and you would think we're at the Cape, really. I mean, this home is just beautiful. Thank you. Um, there's not a lot of Cape-style homes around this not area. Not a lot. We were fortunate to get one. We like Cape Cod style, so yeah, we yeah. were pleased so, to get one. Tell me a little bit about how that influenced your garden here. I mean, your garden's just beautiful. Well, it happens that I like cottage-style gardens anyway, and we had actually visited Martha's Vineyard a few years before we bought this house, and I bought a book about all the gardens and homes of Cape Cod. And so I like the pinks and the purples and the yellows and the whites, and that fits perfectly into a cottage garden. I like perennials, and, um, and then there's also a lot of self-seeding annuals in this garden. Right, so you've got some poppies that I see are going to seed they there. They are going to seed. They bloomed in May. Mm -hmm. And the thing about using a lot of self-seeding annuals is you have to be willing to look at the drying out plant so that it can go to seed and reseed for the next year. But they're kind of architectural and fun in their, in their own way. Yeah, they're very ornamental. So I, did, I had larks, a lot of larkspur. There's a little left and poppies. Next will come Xenia, Cosmos, and Cleome. Okay. And then in the fall, it'll be riddled with uh, coxcomb. And of course, everywhere. the verbena, I know, will reseed all over, <clears throat> it does. too. So, and it yeah. has, yes. Yeah. Well, you have definitely have pulled it off with the, the yellows and the whites <laughs> and the pinks. I just love it. And the texture, too. There's a lot of uh, ornamental texture in this. What really brought us to your garden, though, I mean, this was a pleasant surprise by all <laughs> means, but what really brought us was the shed competition. That's true. Yes. So this is your garden shed from the outside, it, it and is. it is unlike any garden shed that I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I call it my garden house, yeah? so it's a little, a little bit it's of a miniature. It's definitely more than a shed. <laughs> it's a miniature. I, uh, we built it in 2007, and my husband designed it to make sure that it was a scale to our two-story house. Okay. Um, and then he did the outside and all the frill part. He loves to do that. Uh -huh. And I figured out what I wanted on the inside. Okay. So it was a joint effort of both of us. Well, the outside looks beautiful. I love the arbor over it mm -hmm. and, the, and the octagon windows in there, the hexagon windows, the hexagon I should say. Mm -hmm. um, let's go in inside let's and see what your work has done. <laughs> This is just lovely, gal. Thank you. Thank you. So I first noticed the pegboard. Mm -hmm. I got to talk about this pegboard. I love how it's so functional, I guess, but it's also it just kind of classy too. Well, thank you. I've never really thought it was classy. <laughs> I just wanted to be able to move stuff around because yeah. at different times of the year, I do different things in here. Like you now I'll start hanging poppies to drop seed or okay. to gather the seeds. And so I dry things in here. I dry herbs also. So okay. um, I wanted to be able to move the walls around without making a lot of holes in them. So they already have holes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just so unified that you don't even, it just kind of mm -hmm. goes into the background a little bit. It does. But yet it's functional. Mm -hmm. So, so let's, let's talk a little bit about how you decorate. I have a feeling some of these things are kind of personal mementos to you. <laughs> Um, you've got beautiful furniture in here, and is this a potting table? That's my potting bench. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh, it's beautiful. They were actually made by a man from Weatherford who uh, was a math professor at Southwestern, mm -hmm. and he um, he made the potting bench and both of the cupboards. Okay. And then he came back in, and I had purchased that from a, 
a, just a box store, and he roughed up my um, sink area to oh, look, okay, to, to match, match the rest of the furniture. He would go around and collect things from old homes. Oh, okay. And um, put the pieces together into whatever you wanted. And uh, you've got your little hole, hole. here for your <laughs> debris and right? that sort my of stuff. my potting soil yeah, underneath, yeah. and scrape it back in. So yeah. is there a story behind the brand here? And that's, that's my family's brand, Bellman. Oh, okay. My dad was Henry Bellman, and he um, drew the brand one night. I uh -huh. remembered him doing it. And it's been registered for probably 50 years. Wow. So and, then my, and the stained glass was done by my mother. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. So you've got a lot of mementos from your dad. So I do. We've got your license plates up mm -hmm. here. And how old were you when he was governor? Um, I had just turned 12 the okay. first time. All right. and so then, you got to experience the mm -hmm. governor's mansion and everything? We did. And mm -hmm. then I, he was then elected 24 years later. So I went back with my family, which was fun. <laughs> which I was bet. Fun. So I, I'm drawn to your seed collection over here. This is just, <laughs> I have a hard a time throwing things away, <laughs> as you can tell. No wonder your garden looks so good. I mean, you're well, really collecting. Well, it's amazing what a garden produces, mm -hmm. uh, a flower garden. Lots of seed, um, lots of babies. I have baby coneflower popping up everywhere out oh, there. Oh, yeah. Um, and so I started just saving seeds and collecting them. And then I started borrowing seeds from other gardens I might visit. And um, so somehow they get in your pocket. Somehow they <laughs> land in your pocket. Poppies are especially good at that. So I, um, I decided I wanted to just have them out. So if people wanted seeds when they came by, I could give them to them. Or if, like this year, the larkspur didn't really dry out. It okay. was so wet, it just kind of disintegrated. Yeah. So I'm going to take some of the larkspur seed and spread it in my garden just to make sure I have larkspur next yeah, year. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful plant. This is a chicken nest that I gathered eggs from as a child. Okay. We had a big um, chicken house, and my mother had an egg business. So we would gather the eggs and wash them and candle them and box them up. And she would drive over to Enid and sell them to different restaurants and hospitals. Wow. In the, this is 1950s. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's so great that mm -hmm. it's still part of your family it here is. and everything. I, I love having So it what was kind of the plan when you were building this, this garden shed? <laughs> <laughs> uh, as a child, um, my grandmother had 10 grandchildren, six of them were girls, uh -huh. and we would all gather at her house to play, and she turned her wash house over to us, and we had to drive up a window, and my grandfather would pull out a stock tank and we had to use it for our swimming pool. We just had the best time at my grandmother's house. So I wanted a place like that to use for gardening, of course, but uh -huh. also to share with my grandchildren. Yeah. So and the, do they get to come they, and enjoy they it They do here? come and enjoy it. Yeah. And, and, and neighborhood children come and enjoy it. Well, and I almost feel like I'm in a tree house because we've got so many windows <laughs> and we're looking out and we just see a lot of trees and branches and your, your lovely garden, of course. Well, and, yeah. It's just really nice. But this is actually a functioning shed, too. I mean, it's beautiful. It is. But I've got to peek around here <laughs> because you really have your lawn mowers and your weed eaters and that sort of stuff mm -hmm. back there. Everything is there. Yeah, it, we use it every day during yeah. the growing season. And a lot of times in the winter, I like to write, so I'll come out here to write sometimes because okay. it's quiet and yeah. away from everything. Yeah, and you got a nice fan to keep it cooler I do. in here for you. <laughs> so do you also um, do some flower arranging? Because I'm seeing a lot of baskets and, and wire Vases. and stuff like that. Vases, yeah. Mm -hmm. I do. Um, I make arrangements for our church every week during the growing season. And um, I do... For, I'm involved with a food pantry here called Loaves and Fishes, a client choice food pantry. And I take an arrangement there every week so the clients have something cheery when they when they come in. And lots of friends and, a, and occasionally a small wedding. So right. I do like to arrange flowers. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to do when you just can go out and pick any, you know, just keep picking until it looks good. Yeah, and with <laughs> that much of a garden out there, you've got plenty of flowers plenty to choose to from. from. Yes, yeah, I definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, I love your shed. And I love how you've customized it with really personal, I mean, you've even got some photos of your dad when he was younger mm -hmm. up here and, and your 4-H your garden project. Uh -huh. and Everybody's your grown zinnias in a tire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a classic, right? It is. <laughs> Oklahoma. But it's just really beautiful. And, and again, the pegboard, being able to really see all of your tools, it having is. it out, knowing where to grab it and that sort of stuff. On any size garden shed, I think it's great. I, if anybody comes in and says, I'm building a shed, can I look at yours? I say the first thing is line it with pegboard. That's it. It really it makes everything so handy. That's a great tip. Thank you for sharing <laughs> well, this garden shed. Well, thanks for coming. I really appreciate it.
Charles Laddick's backyard in Moore, Oklahoma. And what brings us here is his shed. But before we talk about your shed, Charles, and we can't ignore our beautiful backyard that you have here, you've got a nice little vegetable garden tucked in here. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing? Well, uh, we uh, have uh, just a few things. We like tomatoes. My, my wife really likes tomatoes, so uh -huh. we always have a few tomatoes. and onions and sometimes we plant some lettuce in the spring. We like asparagus so we've got our asparagus patch here. And I've uh, even noticed you got some asparagus tucked around your ornamental yeah, garden too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, uh, we, we eat as much as we can and then we give it some to the neighbors and the, our kids don't like it. They grew up on it. We used to <laughs> have it all the time when we were out in the country. You wore them out. <laughs> wore them out. <laughs> our son-in-law likes it and a couple of our grandsons like it, but our daughters don't. Well, it makes a nice foliage the rest of the yeah. time of the year. Yeah. So. yeah, and I try to keep it where I, I would, the way I've done the fence is I tried to keep it where it stands up and it doesn't fall over. Oh, yeah. And it, so, you, so you can get in there and cut it whenever it's, whenever it's producing and then and it, it doesn't... Uh, Shade, uh, shade you don't everything. lose yeah. it, yeah. miss some of those. Yeah. Well, outside of your shed here, we've got a few things to look at. Of course, you've got a water, water feature, which is kind of nice, having the sound of water. Mm -hmm. And then you're espaliating a tree here. Yeah. It looks like this yeah. is an apple tree we've got. Yeah. I. Uh, uh, it's a uh, it's a dwarf uh, yellow delicious and. Uh, uh, when we lived in the country, we always liked yellow delicious because they make such good pies and uh, strudels and things like that. And uh, so I'm trying to get it to produce and make it what I want it to be. Yeah. Well, a lot of times we think we can't do fruit trees because we're in a small backyard or something. But you're proving us all wrong here with this. Yeah. Uh, how long have you been growing this as a spalier? Uh, about uh, this is the third season on it. Okay. I when I first started with this when I made some mistakes but I've been able to recover and uh, it's doing pretty well now hopefully uh, in the next couple of years it'll start producing. Very nice and you, you do have some other fruit trees around we're going to get to here in a minute yeah. right? right? Yeah. So your shed outside of course doesn't look like a shed at all. <laughs> it kind of blends in with your neighborhood here. Is yeah. that a requirement or? Yeah uh, yeah we're require uh, our homeowners association uh, bylaws require us to have it looking like a uh, like it, it's part of the uh, home uh -huh. and uh, so we uh, built it afterwards we got approval uh, from the uh, homeowners association and built it and bricked it and 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 uh, I like like having it here because I can uh, keep a lot of my stuff out of my uh, workshop. Okay, all right. So this is where your garden stuff is. You've got a second hobby that you do woodworking with? Yeah, I try to do some woodworking. Uh, sometimes I'm not real pleased with it, but <laughs> uh, that's what I try to do. Well, it looks like some of your woodworking skills have come in handy in here with your storage. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about how you've utilized that? Well, yeah, I try to come up with ideas on how to uh, uh, to make things uh, economically and uh, use uh, the space as efficiently as I can. And uh, so I make a lot of my holders uh, uh, for holding my tools and, and uh, my yard equipment and uh, just uh, various other things. Well, I like the double decker where you've kind of put a board on top of another board to hold two layers of tools there. Yeah, it, it, uh, it works well. That way I don't have to spend uh, a lot of time uh, finding stuff. Yeah, uh, everything's out there in the open for you. Yeah, everything's out in the open for me, so. Well, let's talk a little bit. Uh, you have a beautiful lace bark elm here, which gives you a nice little shade garden, it looks like, that yeah. starting to be more of a shade garden anyway, yeah. right? Yeah, it didn't start out to be that way. It, uh, that tree has really grown and done well. I think it's probably been there about six years, seven years, so it's yeah. really grown well. and and I have to keep pruning it to keep keep it out of my roofs but I I like the effect that it that it gives back here I think it looks pretty nice myself yeah. But. yeah but even better than that I see a tree that is calling my name over here <laughs> you've got this beautiful peach tree that I mean it's loaded with peaches well yeah I I, I we enjoy fresh fruit and you when you go to the grocery store the stuff that's been picked uh, two or three weeks before it's ripe, uh, we we prefer to have it fresh off the tree. Right. And so this has worked out nice, and 
and I don't have to mow the lawn and and uh, back here it it, uh, it works it works well. Yeah, I, it seems like you found a little microclimate for your your orchard here. <laughs> You're right between two houses, a lot of concrete around us. Yeah. And, and they seem to be doing well. You've got another I've got an apricot tree started there and another column or apple okay. uh, that uh, I had one, but I, it wouldn't grow, so I, I took it out and put in an, and ordered a new column or apple, and it's, uh, it seems to be doing good. That's its second year here, so. And then I've got a column or apple in the front that's uh, about its fourth year. Oh, wow. And, uh, and, and it's doing really well, so. Okay. Um, so what do you think is a tribute to having all of this heavy fruit on this tree this year? <laughs> We well, had some late freezes. Well, I, I, uh, I, uh, whenever I get a night that is going to be cold, I put a, uh, I've got a big umbrella I put over it, and then I take a heat lamp and plug it in and, and try to keep it from freezing, and it seems to have worked. I've done it for three or four years now. Yeah, definitely. And, and, uh, and every year we get peaches off of it, so I'm happy about that. And it's broke it, with the surroundings here it the the tree doesn't break off bad okay. uh, we don't get much wind on it so it it helps it a lot well i would keep protecting it anytime you get those late frosts because it's definitely worth it this time of year yeah. isn't it yeah we're we're looking forward to to, to eating some peaches I, i'm just a week or two early aren't i <laughs> well I, I, i'm sure you can find one or, or, or some that you can take with you charles thank you so much this has just been great and we appreciate you sharing your backyard with us well, thank you very much visiting one of our garden shed competition winners and joining me today is Pamela Turnbull and I just love your shed here it's kind of turned inside out you get to be out in the garden but it's a nice cool protected area tell us a little bit about how this idea came about well I needed some place to house all my things <laughs> and some place to pot and do things in the spring yeah. but I wanted a place for relaxation right our backyard is all about family fun and just having a nice place to be so I thought let's utilize the back of John's shop and so we had a friend build the cover for us and then John built my lovely potting bench. This is beautiful. Out of actually some old lumber that came from I think it was Pennsylvania. Oh some friends goodness. had brought it. Uh, they were transporting a, a, a horse walker and oh, they were okay. using to support it. So we've had this big old wood. So he built this for me and it's just a lovely place to come by two o'clock. This is my haven, <laughs> and I can lay here because it's all in this in this in this uh, shade. We're on the east side and of the read. shed. Yes, yeah. yeah. so yeah. it's it's just a fun place. And quite often, I'll find him out here with all his saws set up, and um, in the cool place too. So we share this. Very nice. Well, and I love how you've got your your flower containers and things up here. So it's easy access, and I can't imagine potting out here. It just would be a really <laughs> joy, I imagine, and. With all good sheds, I mean, you have an amazing garden. Thank we you. can't just come and look at your shed. Can we go take a look at your garden sure. as well? Sure, I'd love for you Great. too. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> So, Pamela, you clearly enjoy being out in the garden. You have a lot of little areas to sit and enjoy. And here you've created kind of a privacy hedge almost out of blueberries. Tell me about this. All right. Well, I do think that the garden has rooms, just like a house has yep. rooms. And so this is our little eating area, our little dining area. And I tried to grow blueberries just out in the garden and I didn't have much success. Right. So the minute I put them in pots where I could control the acidity and I could control the water, 
Voila, beautiful blueberries. So I've had them in the pots for probably seven years, just finishing harvesting them, and they are wonderful. And I think they're a very pretty bush. They are, they're very, I, I love the colors that they come in. And it looks like you might have a couple of different varieties. I do, there. I have a couple yeah. of varieties and-, and uh, But they're all doing well. All doing well. Excellent. Yep. So, yep. And, the, and the containers aren't necessarily that large to- No. They're not, uh, they're manageable. They're manageable. It's a, a daily drink and they do just great. Very good. So as we go around here, we're kind of in your backyard a little bit. I mean, again, just you've created some alleys and access points that are really nice. I'm drawn to this. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, this is kind of a um, uh, tip of the hat to Magnolia Garden. <laughs> she has those little uh, beds along her walkways and I just thought it was charming. So I thought, Let's do that. So this has been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of experiment trying to find the plants that would not completely take over, but would do well. So this year they're doing well. Of course, we've had lots of rain. The, the gar <laughs> is a nice touch because it adds that little bit of a boundary, but it's so airy and light. Yes. It's a nice plant to add here. It's fun. Um, and of course, we've got this threshold to go over this drag <laughs> creek bed. Is this, is this some of John's handiwork? My husband, John, is my... Um, landscape hardscape art guy <laughs> and so he's learned how to build so many things and i love whimsy in the garden yeah i just think a garden should be a fun place that draws you in and so this is our latest arch that he built for me my old metal one kind of rusted away so he put this up for me this year and um there's just lots of little fun places it's, in the it's garden. It's got some personality to it. <laughs> yeah. it definitely and you built does. built the bridge too. It's beautiful. <laughs> and so this is a dry creek bed. Yes. Um, and, and I love your solution. You added some um, money ward in here mm -hmm. because rock's expensive. Right, <laughs> right, right. Well, I love the look of the rock for the dry stream bed, but just couldn't afford it and didn't want to shovel it all. Right, right. So we just kind of let this grow and oh my word, it has taken over and I, I kind of like the, the way it looks. Yeah. Now, does this actually function too to help with some drainage and yes, stuff? Yes. We're on a long slope and so uh, there's a lot of water that flows through here on those toad strangler rains <laughs> we've we had haven't. a few yes, <laughs> yes. yes we have. so this will be completely full when it's raining but dry the rest of the summer so it just kind of adds once again a little more whimsy to the garden very nice and so of course this leads us to your beautiful vegetable garden here i love a balance of ornamentals and vegetables and I recognize some straw bell gardening when I see it. Yes. Have you been doing this long? This is beautiful. I love the way you've terraced or trellised it. So, I really have only done the straw bales two, three years, excuse okay. me. Yeah, the first year I tried cages and that didn't work very well. They kept falling over. And so I did a little research and found these uh, bamboo stakes at a heavy garden supply and uh, ordered them. And so uh, we trained them up that, pinch all the suckers. And as you can see, they fruit this. heavily. It's just like grape clusters. They're I just, just amazing, love them. Yeah. But there was another purpose for this. This particular bed um, is underneath this uh, maple tree mm -hmm. and the roots go crazy. And so my husband didn't want us to cut down the tree, which I understand, but I still wanted a garden. So the straw bales work wonderfully. Okay. So by the end of the season, the roots of the tree are starting to come up, but we get to harvest and then we jerk them all up again and, okay. and start again. So it's very functional for us. So it's more of a temporary space yes. for your tomatoes to grow mm -hmm. and, and keeps those roots contained. There we go. That's it. <laughs> excellent, excellent. They say you can't grow under a tree. Aha. Uh -huh. You're doing it. And, and it seems like your tomatoes might be enjoying a little of that afternoon shade. I just think a little they bit. are. So they're, they're doing quite well. You've got a couple of different varieties in here. Yes, it looks like. we so. have the uh, of course the little cherry tomatoes and then some bigger ones for canning and so I try different varieties all the time just to see which ones I like. Fantastic and I love how you've added some uh, pollinator plants in here uh -huh. and, and do you do a lot of pollinator gardening? I do I think I think we need to uh, give a hand to the bees and the butterflies Absolutely. I mean there's so much spraying and pesticides and things so I never use any of that in my garden and I just let volunteer plants come up I just think it adds a little bit of beauty and they um, some of them are companion plants and it just works well. Yeah. Well, thank so. you, Pamela. This has just been a joy. What a surprise <laughs> to come here and look at a shed and then find this garden. Thank you. We, we, you must be doing a lot in that shed and out in your garden. <laughs> it's my love. It's what I love. Thank so. you for sharing it with thank us. Thank you, Casey. <laughs>
Be sure and consider these activities when you're making your plans for the weeks ahead. Next week, we are planning a fabulous plant material extravaganza. We want to warn you now that there are so many plants, and just like us, you will want them all in your landscape. Don't say we didn't warn you. We hope you join us next week for the fun, possibly beautiful plant overstimulation, and as always, TV you'll grow to love. To find out more information about show topics, as well as recipes, videos, articles, fact sheets, and other resources, including a directory of local extension offices, be sure and visit our website, oklamagarding.okstate.edu. And we always have great information, answers to questions, photos, and gardening discussions on your favorite social media as well. Join in on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can find this entire show and other recent shows, as well as individual segments on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. And tune in to our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel to watch segments from previous hosts. Oklahoma Gardening is produced by the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service as part of the Division of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources at Oklahoma State University. The Botanic Garden at OSU is home to our studio gardens and we encourage you to come visit this beautiful Stillwater Jewel. We would like to thank our generous underwriter, the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry. Additional support is also provided by Pond Pro Shop, Greenleaf Nursery and the Garden Debut Plants, the Oklahoma Horticultural Society, and the Tulsa Garden Club. <laughs>